Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and today's video is a gas tutorial on the installation of a brand new gas hob. Now, we're at the customer's house, I've got three trainees to help me along the way, so let's get on with it. Now, this is the hob we're going to be removing. Well, first of all, we need to take the oven out. The oven's been temporary uh, put in by the customer, but as you can see, it doesn't go back because the gas pipe's sticking out too far. So I've just had to take the plug off because it has got a very short lead. So we're going to get this oven out first. It's not fixed in. So that's the oven out. Let's have a look underneath and see what we're going to deal with. Okay, so this is the pipe we're going to be making the alterations to. So you can see we've got an isolation uh, valve already. But this pipe here is going to need to go further up to the top to allow the, uh, the new oven to actually go in. So the guys are just doing a tightness test now to make sure we've got no leaks and doing their visual inspections. And then we're going to disconnect it from here and here. And then we're going to take the hob out. So let's get on with that. Okay, so the first thing now is we're going to take off the nut here and the nut here so we can remove this hob and then get the gas out anyway. It's always a hot topic of discussion in the gas industry of whether a hob can be installed with a cook hose or not. Well, technically it can if the manufacturer's instructions say you can and the hob is installed to BS6172 and the hose itself is manufactured to BS669 part 1 but I would always pipe it with rigid pipe myself. So that's the pipe out, let's get the hob out. Next thing is we've got to undo the clamps here, there are four of them. One off. Another major consideration you must take into account when installing these hobs are the clearances around things. So things like, is there an extractor hood or a cupboard above and how far above does that need to be and how far away from units at the side you need to be. You must always consult the manufacturer's instructions for these dimensions because not every hob is the same. Well actually there was three of them. Well, that's now ready for coming out. Okay, so we've got the new hob and we can see it doesn't actually fit at the front here or down the side. So we're going to have to trim a little bit off the sides. Now this is where I wish I'd brought my multi-tool. Okay, so we've got this, uh, Gilly's brought in this massive big saw. I don't know if I'm shouting or not, so uh, let's have a go. When carrying out tasks like this, you must always take into consideration the correct PPE equipment you'll require. So in things like this, you'll require your goggles, your ear defenders, and I should really be wearing a dust mask as well. Now cutting worktops, you can use loads of different power tools to do this. Um, I'm using like an alligator saw with a fixed blade, which are good. Multi-tools are good, but they take forever to do. Jigsaws are not really the best um, way of putting a worktop out because they're too flexible. But if you do mess up cutting a worktop, it could cost you quite a bit of money to replace that worktop. Okay, it fits. All we're going to do now is get the tape round, get it secured, and let's get it piped up. Okay, so we've put the gas connection on and we've put the tape around the edges, and we can now fit it in, clamp it up, cut off the excess tape you can see, okay, and then we can get it piped up. Okay, so we've put the new pipe connection in now. So you can see it there. We've clamped it in four places. You can see there. So we're all now set for commissioning. So the guys have just gone off now doing their second tightness test. 
making sure we've got no leaks, then we're going to purge and then uh, we're going to commission it. Okay, so the hob is now ready, packed up, oven's in, Gilly's just wiring it up, so you get an electrician to do the job for you. We've got the windows open, so Lewis is over there, We've got the windows open, they're ready to purge. Zishan has got the gas on, so we're going to purge. So that's our... Is everything off now? Okay, so that is our standing pressure. Do you want to turn the three biggest rings on? So they're now going to do working pressure, putting the three biggest rings on. Is that done? Okay. No. So there you go, that is our working pressure at the meter. Okay, so I'm just going to get the rings lit. Test them. Now this hob has got uh, flame supervision devices, it's got thermoelectric. I'm now going to turn them all on to minimum. Okay, and they're all staying lit. We're now um, going to try the hot tap to see if we get any changes. Do you want to go and just slip the hot tap on for us, mate? Now, we're just testing and making sure now that when the boiler fires up, that it doesn't affect the safe working of the hob. Boil is fired up, nothing's been affected at all. You can turn that off, see, Sean. Okay, so next thing we're going to do now is we're going to use the analyzer as a stopwatch and I'm going to blow out the thermoelectrics and see how long it takes for them to cut out. So they're all blown out. So they all, within 10 seconds, they all knocked off. Okay, so for a hob, now all thermoelectric devices is 60 seconds. Okay, manufacturing instructions says that within 60 seconds. So that's the safety devices. So the guy's now are going to go off and going to gas rate them. Okay, so we've got working pressure at the meter, standing pressure at the meter. We're not doing working pressure at the appliance because it's hard on a hob to try and get a proper reading without setting yourselves on fire. We've now checked the safety devices. We've done all our measurements and make sure it, it um, actually meets the manufacturer's instructions. Now, the only thing that doesn't is this here. This, but this is um, heat resistant. So there's no signs of scorching from the other one either. So we've spoken to the customer about it and said best practice would be for that to go, but um, they're reluctant to do that, okay? So, so far, all the other measurements are well within the manufacturing instructions, so we've just got to gas rate it now and make sure it comes out uh, to the manufacturers. Let's get on with it. Now, we've just finished installing this hob, so let's have a quick recap on what we did. First of all, we did a visual inspection of the gas meter and the pipework and checked with our non-contact voltage indicator to make sure that there was no power going down any of the gas pipes or the meter so we wouldn't get electrocuted. After the visual inspection, we knew we was uh, removing the hob and we checked all the other appliances in the property. Uh, we then did a tightness test. After the tightness test, we then removed the actual old hob and then we had to cut out the worktop and install the new one, altering the gas pipe. Then we did another tightness test. So after the tightness test, we purged. So it was a G4 smart meter so we, uh, on 22 mil pipe. So we purged to five times the badge capacity. The badge capacity of the meter was two decimeters cubed. Two decimeters cubed times five is 10 decimeters cubed. So that's equivalent to 0 0.01 meters cubed. And we followed the purge procedure, making sure the windows was open in the room and allowed the gas into the room because the room was large enough. So, talking about the room size, uh, we checked the room size and made sure the room was greater than 10 meters cubed because there was no door direct to outside with an openable window. So no ventilation was, was required. 
So after we did that, we did our checks at the meter. So we did standing pressure uh, and working pressure to make sure the regulator was working correctly and we had enough gas in. We then commissioned the hob, gas rating, checking all our dimensions. Um, and then after that, we'd handed it over to the customer. So that was the uh, installation of a gas hob. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, well, why don't you? And um, ring that notification bell because every Wednesday we put new videos up. We're also running new videos on what a gas engineer does besides gas. So why don't you check out those videos? So thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers.